Hello everyone. Welcome to UGC Net Political Science Classes by Drishti IAS. I am Dr. Ashwati. So students, in the last class we have given an introduction to political theory. Okay. We have discussed about the normative tradition, then after the arrival of the behavioral revolution as well as a counter reaction from the post behavioralist. Okay. So, in this lecture, we are going to start with the concept section and in this section, we will be discussing about two concepts. One is liberty and second one is equality. Okay. So, what do you mean by liberty? There are different perspectives that you can find in political theory while you must have studied it in your bachelor's as well as in your uh, this uh, master's degree. Okay. So, liberals give priority to freedom as the supreme individualistic value. Okay, it means that freedom is very essential for a person or a, for an individual for its all over development. Okay, to fulfill his desires and many other things, you need freedom or liberty. Okay, liberty is more associated with that of the liberal perspective. So, in political theory, you get to see this liberal ideas conservative ideas, Marxist ideas, socialist ideas, etc. Okay. Now, within liberalism also, you have different types of uh, liberalism is there. Okay. The first can emerge as a negative conception. Then we have this positive or the modern liberalism. Many other things are there. Okay. So, the while the classical liberals, the earlier liberals, okay, they support negative freedom. So, by negative freedom, we mean the minimal state. Okay. So, negative freedom understood as the absence of constraints or freedom of choice. Now, it means that uh, absence of constraints, okay, I need to go to a place, okay, I need to go to a place and there should, never, there should not be any form of constraints. It means I have freedom, okay, it means that no one is stopping me from there, I have access to the road, I have access to the transportation. I have enough money to like take expense for you know to uh, like you know pay for the bills and many other things. So this is what you understand as the absence of constraints. Okay, so this is the negative uh, conception. Okay, liberty was a natural right an essential requirement for leading a truly human existence. It means that when you are reading about Thomas Hobbes also, you understand about this, that liberty has a natural right. Like when you are born, you have already got this liberty. Okay. And it is being part of your life ever since the time immemorial or from the, from the time of your birth, every individual is endowed with this natural right, an essential requirement for leading a truly human existence in order to live a good life you need liberty and it is a natural right okay but for the modern liberals here we discussed about the classical liberals now we are discussing about the modern liberals okay modern liberals advocated uh, like you know the positive freedom in the sense of personal development and human flourishing so, we can understand it like in a very simple manner. Earlier, it was only about absence of constraints. Now, we are thinking to an another level where we are thinking in terms of like you need certain conditions through which you can actually enjoy that freedom or liberty. At the same time, they are more concerned with the context. Okay, that we will actually uh, discuss further. A condition in which people can. Here, it is condition. Okay, you can understand the norm of condition. A condition in which people can develop their skills and talents and fulfill their potential. Okay, so we all human beings have certain qualities and we should be allowed to do so. Okay, so we need certain conditions in which we can actually enjoy those freedoms as well as like if a person is actually have, is a good painter. Okay, but that person is not having the brush or the canvas or the paper or, or whatsoever that requires, okay. So now that person gets access to the brush, paint as well as the canvas, then that person can actually develop their skills and talents, okay. Even for a person who is a good painter, now you need a place to display your uh, art, okay. You need recognition also, that is a later stage that is associated with the communitarians, okay. Not going to that level. But right now, so the conservatives like Edmund Burke, many other thinkers are there. 
so conservatives have traditionally endorsed a different conception of liberty to the extent that they endorsed a weak view of freedom they treated it as the willing recognition of duties and responsibilities because most of the conservatives are actually uh, they have a status quo thinking they are not very interested with that of the revolutions and change okay so they are very traditional in that manner they think that it is all about willing recognition of duties as a human being you have certain duties towards the state if you fulfill it if you fulfill your responsibilities then you will you are truly free okay because the state is there to provide you with things but the, don't get confused with the welfare state okay this is a kind of a traditionalism that was uh, like you know that was developed by the conservative thinkers okay so for them they are against change they are against a kind of a revolution they need they i am not saying completely they are against a change but they think that change should be gradual not revolutionary so for them it should be evolutionary okay now negative freedom was portrayed as posing a threat to the fabric of society so they thought that if you are giving enormous rights to the people like freedom to the people then people may rebel and it may cause chaos or it may lead to instability in the state and society okay the new right thinkers okay the new right thinkers new right ideologists they however endorses a negative freedom in the economic sphere and freedom of choice in the marketplace so they are actually called as the libertarians also okay the libertarian thinkers they actually like in the contemporary form actually okay so they are some to some level they are conservative to some extent they are also having uh, they portray like minimal state as well as people should have freedom in terms of the economic affairs so you can see that it's a mix up conservative plus liberals we can say the libertarian thinkers now marxism it does not accept the theory of an atomized alienated and possessive individual being capable of enjoying the freedom here the biggest challenge from marxism was that you they were against the possessive individualism okay possessive individualism like this idea was initiated when when this uh, capitalism actually was formed through by uh, like breaking the uh, by breaking the foundations of feudalism okay so at that time it was made necessary that you need a atomized or like you know individualism like that okay it's a individualistic perspective that my rights not about our rights my rights my freedom like that okay so now karl marx actually challenged this uh, individualistic perspective later on cb macpherson also talked about possessive individualism okay so but for the socialists they have generally understood freedom in positive terms so self fulfillment achieved through either free creative labor or cooperative social interaction this is more important like you need cooperation not conflict okay cooperation not competition you need creative labor then after social democrats have drawn close to the modern liberalism in treating freedom as the realization of the individual potential so it means that a person should be allowed to develop his her potential on its own okay and for that the state was deemed necessary like the state should be more welfare state pro welfare like that now uh, let's take an example from the us declaration of independence or the american air declaration of independence 1776 it viewed life liberty and pursuit of happiness as inalienable right of man given by the god it means that liberty equal this life liberty and pursuit of happiness as you cannot take it away from the person because it is endowed by the god itself okay so and then after they also said that all men are created equal now french revolution the slogan liberty equality fraternity again the french declaration of rights of man and citizen 1789 says that men are born and remain free and equal in rights okay so here we get three 
concepts okay one is free equal and in terms of rights as well okay so these two things actually the french revolution american revolution actually made a very big impact in the world politics okay so now we will first take up this negative conception of liberty although we have discussed about it but we will discuss it in, in a deeper sense okay now advocates of negative freedom actually have uh, usually supported two things one is the minimal state and second one is the lysosphere capitalism so here the state is supposed to take the position of night watchman the state's role is limited to that of law and order maintenance not to interfere in the economic affairs of individuals which is lysosphere individualism okay now here the classical expression of negative liberty we find uh, like the freedom from the state which ended up in individualism was a central theory of john locke david hume adam smith jeremy bentham js mill etc okay but js mill will we will discuss js mill also in positive liberty later on okay in the 20th century we have these thinkers michael oxshott isaiah berlin milton friedman f a hayek robert nozick etc these thinkers are like you know they have given a modern concept of negative liberty and also the libertarianism i have already discussed about libertarianism in the uh, in the last slide okay last last slide now the concept of negative liberty played a very important historical role how because it proved instrumental in the establishment of capitalism and uh, a capitalist system especially in europe okay and it released the forces of production which were blocked by the feudal system inherited from the middle ages as actually during this time also political changes also started coming up like absolute monarchy was actually shifted to that of the uh, what we constitutional monarchy then after you have this idea of democracy all these things started actually propping up if you read about nationalism you have thinkers like a uh, gellner who spoke about the high culture how the mass education was utilized to bring out the ideas of nationalism for an industrial society because in feudal society such things were not actually uh, it was the, the time was not ripe for it but under the industrial society it became a necessary that you have to give a mass education okay so the feudal system it was highly a closed system but capitalism actually released the forces of production now every other person is actually working in an urban center in a factory okay that time we had only the classes like you know the haves and have nots or the rich capitalist class as well as the poor working class positive liberty is actually or the positive freedom is linked to the achievement of some identifiable goal or benefit why negate the transition from negative liberty to that of positive liberty is also an interesting element because during uh, this uh, reign of this negative liberty there was a problem that automatically uh, what happened when you are giving too much powers to the individualism or you are promoting individualism it's quite natural that someone will become more powerful and the powerful will definitely be uh, causing tensions for the the those weaker ones okay so the it created industrial conflicts it created tensions in terms of freedom of those marginalized vulnerable population in the uh, in the urban centers or as well as in every other respect okay so might is right theory was actually getting gaining more prominence and especially in the industrial societies itself the working classes were impoverished so it this gave rise to the positive conception of liberty which means that the state has to intervene in certain conditions now it is applicable in the sense of personal development self realization and self mastery okay now it was john stuart mill who introduced the conception of positive liberty it entailed a transition from negative liberalism to positive liberalism mill started with the defense of the lysosphere individualism or negative conception of liberty but later he realized that there are some issues within it so now because in the light of the socio economic reality so he created 
self regarding actions and the other regarding actions so what do you mean by it self regarding actions means that those actions which are uh, like within my own realm like if i am doing something like if i am taking some bad products or something it is going to affect me only okay the state doesn't need to intervene there because it was my choice to take whatsoever okay but now at the second level you have other regarding action what if i am doing something my act may hurt the rights of others then the state has every right to intervene in it okay self regarding action and other regarding action other regarding action means that my actions which has the potential to hurt someone else or to affect the lives of someone else then the state has every right or the state has the power not the right state has the power to intervene it and stop me from doing the same to save the rights of that person okay so this is the other regarding action the idea of liberty through the state please earlier it was minimal state now liberty through the state of the enjoyment of certain equal opportunities received attention the writings of js mill then th green bosanquet hobhouse uh, herold j laski and ernest barker okay so there is one question who among the following are not supporters of positive liberty okay one is john lock and second one uh, and the, the, this one is jeremy bentham okay so these two people actually did not support positive liberty t h green and harold laski they supported positive conception of liberty okay so john lock negative conception of liberty jeremy bentham negative conception of liberty okay this question came in november 2021 ugc net examination okay now after liberty we are going to discuss about equality okay equality absence of privileges okay so absence of special privileges equality of opportunities provision for for political social and economic rights absence of discrimination so like there are 100 people all are to be treated equally okay whether they belong to specific any particular gender race caste class or whatsoever human beings they are all equal okay now this is a question that was asked in october 2020 uh, ugc net examination all aspects of luck including natural ability should be relevant to distributive justice this statement refers to the concept of what okay luck egalitarianism this is an idea propounded by ronald dworkin okay i'll be explaining it in this class okay so now political and legal equality we have to understand the dimensions of equality so political and legal equality the principle of equality was first put forward as the demand for legal equality that is grant of equal legal status to all individuals in society irrespective of their birth physical and mental capacities or other differences because when we are even looking up to that equalities uh, like you know it's a historical first came the political equality okay political legal equality we can say that political equality denotes the equality of political rights of citizens it implies a right to be represented in the decision making the elections we all have the right to cast votes right every other person who has attained the age of 18 barring few there are some exceptions also but still every other person belonging to any class caste gender or anything from who are citizens of this country can vote in the examination so vote in the elections okay so represented in decision making bodies or an on an equal footing that is one man one vote basis okay now the development of liberal theory political equality came to be identified more and more with the democratic rights of the people universalization of franchise the voting rights okay then after equal freedom to hold and express political opinions we all have the right under article 19 we have that, that there are so many freedoms given to us right in the constitution okay to hold and express political opinions without fear or favor 
equal right to form associations or to uh, like you know influence the political decisions as you know that there are many pressure groups interest groups that are there in our country as well as in many other countries as well okay so we have this freedom of association forming association freedom of like you know participating in an election freedom to uh, cast vote in an election all these things are the political rights that we have here economic equality the the 20th century has witnessed a sharpening concern for the economic aspect of equality and the means of securing either within the framework of the liberal system or by establishing a socialist society okay so what do you mean by the economic equality it is a matter of status it is a matter of property and income it means that we all need to be i am not saying that every other person should be provided with equal salaries increments etc but rather than that the economic equality doesn't mean that everybody is to be treated equally on uh, in the economic matters but the person should have the conditions to realize it okay that is more important the matter of status raises the issue whether the state should seek to turn industrial production into something like of a partnership of equals and should introduce a system under which directing and managing elements stand on an equal footing this economic equality is also very interesting concept that under marxism the 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 formation of communes in uh, ussr and china all these things were actually done on experimental basis but it had severe ramifications as well but yes economic equality means that every other person should have the like uh, right to uh, start their business or to do or to select whatsoever uh, their choices like you know to start a business to start anything of your choice of your capability okay so one should not be stopped because you belong to certain class caste gender or whatsoever it should not be like that okay that is what you understand by the economic equality then we have the social equality social equality is concerned with the equality of opportunity you should get the opportunities to undertake any business any enterprise to start any enterprise okay just joseph shampeter has talked about the creative uh, like you know that what we say uh, what the creative destruction theory also he said that we should promote enterprises we should promote this like the startup ideas all these things are part of it if you have good ideas come up with it start the business you all are equal we all human beings are equal but if you have the capability if you have the finances or if you require the finances the state or what sort authority should make available to it if required like you know we have many other schemes also to start certain business also the banks provide loans and many other things okay but the societal norm should not actually put any sort of discrimination on the person in achieving his her goals okay so now it means abolition of all kinds of discrimination so social equality means abolition of all kinds of discrimination on the basis of caste creed religion language race sex education etc now when we have talking about formal equality okay that is the first and foremost ideas that actually got, got developed we have this american declaration of independence we have then after we have this french revolution slogan is also there the american declaration of independence has said that the all men are created equal the french declare that uh, this french revolution slogan men are born and remain free in e free and equal in rights okay so it means that the equality concept actually emerged during that time itself okay then after we have this uh, uh, what we call it as the thomas hobbes actually he uh, postulated uh, that in the natural condition individuals possess equal rights because over time they have the same capacity to do uh, each other the harm okay as we know that the state of nature that he created or the that where the people are actually nasty brutish and short he has created a very pessimistic uh, pessimistic view of the uh, of the state of nature but that is the reason why he says in his leviathan that why you need a common wealth you have to create a commonwealth for the protection of your rights liberties and everything so you are actually like giving all your powers to that one person okay then after we have this john locke's idea that i will be more explaining when i'll be discussing about uh, liberalism as well as i'll be discussing about the uh, political thought section as well okay where i'll be giving an idea about the john locke's idea okay 
So then after the one of the eminent thinker Jean Jacques Rousseau, he has given the idea of uh, inequalities. He dealt with inequality theory. What are the sources of inequality for him? When people lived in state of nature, everything was good. Noble savage, people were good. But when the invention of iron and corn happened, people started exchanging things. It led to creation of haves and have-nots. We can say that the master-slave relation governed and the governing class relations and many other types of relations started uh, propping up. Okay, so master-slave, then after you have this govern, then, then after you have this, you know, the, who is the owner and who is the working class and all these things actually emerged and it created inequalities according to Jean Jacques Rousseau. Now, just coming to the 20th century, we have this uh, John Rawls theory because I will be explaining more John Rawls when I will be discussing about his distributive justice. Okay, So, he has given this idea of fair equality of opportunity. Every person should get hold on the fair equality of opportunity for realization of his, her goals but at the same time he also mentioned about the difference principle that i'll be explaining in the next lecture okay then we have this complex equality is a communitarian michael walzer he said that inequality in one sphere should not actually reflect upon the other sphere let's say that a person is actually having inequality in terms of like that person is not having wealth or something but his that condition should not actually permeate in his access to the health care or to his political rights or anything okay so this is what you call it as the complex equality of michael walzer then we have this equality of resources uh, mentioned by ronald dworkin that is also called as a luck egalitarianism where he is saying that you have to take care of the distributive principles as well. Like sometimes it is like, you know, let's say that some disaster happened. Now the people need to be given the compensation because of the fact that they, it was not in their capacity that has happened. But yes, the state has to make distribute resources on the equity basis. Okay, like there should be fair distribution of uh, what we say the distribution of resources for those who are needy here merit is not the point but rather the need of the persons then after Marx on equality the best way to understand Marx on equality is a statement that we want to abolish classes and in this sense we are for equality so he is of the opinion that in order to have equality you have to abolish the classes haves and have nots and one of the uh, most interesting th idea about Karl Marx idea we can see in his theory of alienation where he says that there are four ways how a person is alienated from the society like that person is alienated from his product then after from the nature from the other men who are there in the society because of the competition of the capitalist system and then after that person is alienated from himself okay so that is about, but we will be discussing more about it. Okay. Now, there is one question. And who has coined the term meritocracy? Okay. So, we have many options here. John Rawls, Robert Nozick, Karl Marx and Michael Young. The answer is Michael Young. Okay. Answer is A. So, students, thank you for watching my lecture. And stay tuned for more lectures and I will be definitely making more videos on uh, unit 1. I will be covering all the concepts and traditions sections. So, stay tuned. Bye.